can get that. Wow. Hi everybody. It is 12 o'clock in the afternoon. We have full sunlight on the solar panels and we never had that until 2 o'clock before. So this is good. Um, the stove has been going for an hour now. I um, actually I think it's been going for 30 minutes since I topped it off the second time. It's burning very hot and clean. Very very clean. Um, but because it's so very hot, it does mean I'm going to have to have an offset on the ceiling, an insulated box on the ceiling where it passes through. So that's a deal. I'm going to, that's an issue I'm going to have to deal with. Really, really hot stove. So yes, what everybody said is true. It's a very hot stove, um, even with wood. But a wood stove is going to be hot. So it won't take much, I don't think, to keep that shed warm. On a, on a cold winter night. It won't take much wood at all, I don't think, especially when I seal off the gaps and put gaskets around it. Now you can see it's getting hot enough to burn the oil off the bottom of the stove, which is another good thing that I'm doing this outdoors. Burn that stove clean through and through. I've also been studying on the internet because I was advised by viewers to research online. Thank you guys and girls. Um, and online I found that you should maybe put some rope gasket around the uh, seam here, all the way around there as well, to help seal that off. But right now, I'm looking like uh, it's pretty good. I mean, it's burning really nice and slow and gentle, but yet it's hot. So it's a full burn. It's an absolutely full, complete combustion. When you have no smoke coming out, you have a good combustion. So that's good. Um, still pretty full, so it's burning nice. Now let me show you the solar uh, batteries. We are already in absorption mode at 12 o'clock. Now remember, I was not pleased because we had 12.5 um, volts this morning, but it's already 55, 60 degrees out. Um, the batteries are warming up. I mean, obviously, that's going to take longer to warm up than the air. But the batteries are warming up, and we're in absorption mode at 12 o'clock already after a miserably cold night. That is cool. That is really nice. We're only pulling in 280 watts of power. So, obviously, we didn't use much last night at all because nothing was running. So uh, we're looking pretty good. I like to see absorption mode at 12. We'll be back in float again by this afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I am putting in, this is in the watershed, the tiny house, off-grid tiny house watershed. I am putting in the walls here. It's taking a long time because I have to cut and piece from mixed matched junk. And as you see, I have to put a one foot strip up above and then still do the triangle gap. I just put in some nailers in the corner over here, just some scrap 2x4 lumber over in the corner, and then I'll put the insulation and I'll put the sidewall on. And then uh, eventually, slowly, we'll be getting the wood stove in here tonight. So tonight there will be heat here in the uh, tiny house water and battery shed. It won't be pretty, but it's gonna be done. Hey everybody, well it's cooling down. It's still pumping some heat. I don't know if you can see the heat flowing out of that. Still pumping some heat, but it's getting quiet. Let me pull this and open it. Well, maybe I can show you here. Um, I have to check the time. I don't know what time it is, but it's burnt down pretty well. Still some coals, so I could still throw some in there if I wanted to. Now this is to simulate what would happen if I filled it up once at night and then left it to uh, heat the shed overnight. So we're gonna experiment and find out. It's still kicking heat though. Let me see how long it is here. So this has been burning almost three hours and uh, it's still got coals in there so the stove itself is still hot. So I think we'll be all right. I think it'll work. If that burns for three good hours in an eight hour night, I do believe that uh, the heat radiating in the shed should be enough. 
I guess we're going to find out. Because the tiny house is not being heated yet. And it's not getting frozen yet at night. So we'll see. Hi guys. Well, I've pieced that wall in. Uh, I still have to do the triangular up uh, piece up there. And then I was just checking in with the heat shielding. I've got it. This is too short, this wall here, for a full heat shield, and I'm not going to cut that. So I'm going to go get a piece of sheet metal and make a shield for the side wall. And then the stove would be more centered here anyway, so farther away from there. It's a hot stove. So um, I'm going to move that brick from the right over, and that gives air behind and below airflow. So I'm going to take a little coffee break and come back. Hopefully I'll get that stove in here tonight, though. Hi, guys. I'm making a insulated... Uh, it's going to be a triple wall pipe to pass through the ceiling of the shed. The off-grid shed here. So, what I'm going to do, I'm setting up a frame. I need to figure out how to, I know where, on the wagon. Can you see the wagon? The edge of the wagon? Yes, you can. I'm going to pre-mark this on the tip of the wagon here. For two screws. And then, I'll come back to that in a minute. These two screws go through here. This is going to hold this frame together. I think I need to go back to here. The best way to do it is right here. a frame and make my own triple wall pipe. I thought it was going to work over here so that's why I'm reaching. I know somebody's going to ask, why didn't you bring your tools to you? Okay, now there's that. Now, we're out of three inch nails, so I have to nail these together. This part, I'm going to go take it in and check it out, but this is going to go across rafter and this box so then will fit right on the edge of the rafter and the pipe will go up through the roof so I'm going to check that right now and we'll be back in a minute okay guys I am making an offset of an inch and a half which is where this will connect, uh, screw into the rafter in the shed. And this side of the uh, shield will be closer to the rafter. I got some non-self-tapping screws. I don't know how well they'll go in here. Oh, not bad. And then the other end will hang on the other rafter. Okay. I 
think I'm going to have to put some screws in from the inside of this into the wood. I don't think though, maybe I can make that happen. Because this will be too flimsy. Of course, once it's top, there's really, yeah, it's not going to matter. Once that's hanging on the rafter, that won't matter. That side to side wobble won't matter at all. So now I do the same thing on this side, an inch and a half offset. I'm using 2x3 because that's all I have left. There's no 2x4 material in any good shape to use. So, this is what we got. take it in and do a test see it how it holds up how it looks all right and then this piece of pipe will be inside this pipe it's a piece of scrap for us and I'm going to offset it with a few screws so I'll have to drill through and uh, put some screws in there and then the four inch pipe goes through here so this will be the heat shield for the four inch pipe and this will be the heat shield for this heat shield and this will be the heat shield for the fiberglass insulation and if I find some rock wool I could probably stuff it in there uh, just for added benefit so I think that we're gonna be okay now that black pipe will be flush with the uh, metal rough it won't be hanging up it'll be hanging down and not up so I'm gonna take this into the shed and see how it looks so hope you can see what I'm about to do I'm just placing this next to here to hold it in place and see if my work is going to work so that's gonna get screwed into there and then the pipe will go up through the center of that okay and then this, yeah, the pipe will go through there. Okay. This is going to work. And there, guys, we have a heat shield. Should be good. I have that spaced off all the way around using uh, my, uh, screws all the way around. So we basically have a three wall heat shield. Now, as long as those screws are not sticking out, too far, I'm going to have to make sure my 4 inch pipe still goes through there and uh, I'm going to do that right now and if that's good then all is well, if not I'll have to use shorter screws which is no problem. Hey everybody, it's fading daylight I uh, put a hole through the roof I've got my box, I've got the screws preset in my box here that's going on the roof, on the rafters. I have to feed it through, this is awkward, somehow, because there's no room in here for anybody else but me, somehow I've got to get, feed this through here, feed my pipe through, there we go, get this up in position, and attempt to screw this in place and keep that pipe straight down to the stove at the same time. Oh, come on. I don't have the right angle. Oh, I don't have the strength. Oh. Phillips screws. I don't like Phillips. There's one. Okay, a little bit less stress on me. No. I'm gonna make sure it's gonna come through okay to the stove. I don't like the looks of it. Okay, sort of. Back that out. Now let me get the other one. I have to move my ladder. Get the other screws. Let's take quarters in here. 
I thought a 10x10 10 10 was big, but it's not. In retrospect, I wish I'd have built a 12x12 12 12 in here. Sorry guys, I have to shut off the camera because I'm going to block you. I can't figure out what's hanging up there. Hi guys. Well, there's the potbelly pipe uh, stove <laughs> with its pipe. I'm thinking pipe because I've been working on pipe for hours. Through the rough with the blocking, framing, triple wall construction, uh, all the way through. And now I can put insulation up to here and here. I won't put any up near that pipe at all. Let me take you outside and show you the pipe outside. And there is the pipe. Looks nice and straight. It's above the solar panels, above the tiny house roof. Perfect. I'm going to go out and put the stove cap on and I'm going to try a test burn. Hey guys, I got the cap on and I've got the ropes tied down and it's time to start a test burn. Hi everybody. I have started the fire. I have my laser thermometer on standby. And I will be checking things. Set this down, it's all dark in here. Let me shut up my light and you'll see the glow of the fire. Okay. And also a leak uh, around the seams where I said earlier that people have suggested I seal that off. So, uh, sounds like it's burning well. I'm going to close this here. And then um, we'll let that burn. I think that's burning. And then, where's my pliers? Ah. Oh yeah. I think I'm going to let that burn up a little bit more. So, it's hard to hold the camera and get this going, but I'm going to get this going and I'm going to be checking temperatures as we go here. So, I'll come back with the camera from time to time and tell you what's going on. Hi guys. Well, wait, where's my thermometer? The stove is hot, as people warned. Uh, 585 the pipe 452 up here 279 now this was 600 degrees this pipe when I first fired up the stove so and um, there are leaks so it's nearly impossible to keep this under control so people are right when they warn me they are correct absolutely correct this stove is dangerous Although I wonder what would happen if I put fire bricks around the outer perimeter, um, around the outside of the burn chamber, if that would help. Because what happens when you first fire this up, um, you get a super, super hot burn, and it was scary temperature levels. The heat shield on the side is 271, right next to that. But behind it is, well, what do we got? Mm. 82. What is it way back in here? Let me see if I can check it. Oh, it's cold to touch. It's not 80 degrees. It's actually cold to touch back in here. Oh, wow. That's actually cold to my hand. So behind that is fine. I threw in a piece of metal over here. Uh, that's 191. The wall behind it is 76 degrees. Now up here, uh, right across from the pipe, we got 100 degrees. Up here, the air is really getting warm in here. Um, 92, 85. Now that's uninsulated right there, uninsulated wood. So it's about 100 degrees. It's getting to be about 100 degrees. Now we're here in the opposite wall, uh, up against the tiny house. We got 80 degrees. So it has heated up this room fast, really fast. Now, my, um, my stove pipe is 252, my black pipe is 158, and my outer pipe, my outer metal is almost the same, 156. So, still too high. So, I'm going to have to do something with that up there. The outer box, oh wait, 103 here. Interesting. Here, the black pipe is 152. The metal box is, well, 118, 103, 107, 106. Uh, the wood, 
107 which if wood's gonna burn on what it won't hit 100 degrees and we're in trouble around the world because uh, it gets to be that hot in summer so what's the rafter uh, 90 90 degrees 87 so right now it's it's safe temperature but a while ago it was absolutely scary when I first fired it up it was terrifying so I'm gonna experiment and I have to I definitely have to put a rope gasket all the way around inside fiberglass rope and put that back together because that is leaky and it gets air in through there I'm gonna to have to put seal around this panel in the back because it gets air through there I see actually can you see the uh, glow of the fire there you can see it leaks badly so that definitely needs gasket all right and you can see down air um, can, we, can you see that well I can see a glow out behind the uh, door you can't see it on the camera but I can see the glow behind that door down below so that's leaking and of course here we have a leak and then there we got a leak so maybe I could seal it up maybe I can get it under control maybe not um, it's worth experimenting with now that I have a hole through the roof so the worst case I could always swap that out with a bigger stove I mean a more controllable stove and a bigger stove pipe well guys that's it I'm gonna let this burn down uh, it is a hundred degrees in here now so I may drop in a couple little tiny pieces of wood now and then to keep that glowing let me let me pause the camera put my thermometer down and get the pliers in my hand all right so what we got and this is just the kindling okay this was just the kindling all right we, we're down to coals now but it is super 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 hot in here unbelievable I think fire brick would be very beneficial but we're down to coals I may throw, throw some wood on there after uh, later on and just keep the coals going uh, and then close up the curtain before bedtime tonight and uh, see what happens out here with the temperature by, by morning.